Hey, I've been gone for a while now. That's not to say that I haven't been keeping up with what's been going on in the theory space, though. I've been keeping an eye on things, and if you've been doing the same, you've no doubt noticed the rise in popularity of an old topic, the identity of Golden Freddy's spirit. Who are they? And even more interestingly, how many are there? Is Golden Freddy really possessed by two souls, or is there only one? This question was raised by Dual Process Theory in a two hour long video, and in the aftermath, there's been a bit of a split in the community, with multiple channels joining in on the conversation. Now, to be entirely honest with you all, I didn't want to make a video like this. I don't like the idea of making videos directly reacting or responding to other theories, but to continue being entirely honest, it's probably for the best that I do. It's easier to respond to something rather than make an entire new video on another subject, and I need something easy to help me get back into the swing of making content. Plus, talking about the current hot topic of FNAF will hopefully save me from the algorithm nightmare that my channel was probably put in after almost a year of not uploading. So, let's get started. First off, to give you my answer, I fully believe that there are two spirits inside of Golden Freddy, the Crying Child and the Vengeful Spirit. The biggest reason for this comes from FNAF 3's endings. In fact, both the good and bad endings support this claim. Let me refresh your memory. By beating FNAF 3 without doing any of the minigames, you get the bad ending, where we can see all of the animatronic heads with a light on in one of their eyes. But in the back, we can see Golden Freddy with two lights on, one for each eye. This was the backbone of the two souls theory for Golden Freddy, but it's recently been called into question due to an interpretation of the good ending that, quite frankly, I don't believe in. You see, doing all of the minigames in FNAF 3 lets you help the spirits of the children move on, and once you've freed the five children's souls, you're able to get the good ending, where all of the lights in the animatronic heads have gone out. But that begs a massive question. Why did both of Golden Freddy's eyes go out? If there are two souls possessing Golden Freddy, but we only see one of them moving on, then why did both go out instead of only just one? I've seen three answers to this question. I've heard people claim that there were never two lights on in Golden Freddy's mask, and that the lighting just made it appear that way. I've heard people say that the second eye was meant to represent the puppet, who also moved on at the end of FNAF 3's happiest day. And of course, I've heard people claim it to be a retcon, one of many that Scott has allegedly made. I don't believe in any of those answers. In fact, I don't believe in the question itself. Why did both lights go out? Well, they didn't. Let's go back in time for a bit and talk about the franchise around the time that FNAF 3 came out. One of my favorite things about FNAF at this point in time was actually Scott's unique way of posting teasers. He didn't just drop videos or images to hype us up, he had secrets for us to find. Things like digging through the source code of his website, or brightening up his teaser images to find clues hidden in the darkness. In fact, he did this very thing for one of FNAF 3's endings. By beating FNAF 3's Nightmare Mode, otherwise known as Night 6, you get a glimpse of a newspaper stating that Fazbear's Fright burned down overnight, and that very few items were salvaged. But if you take this image and turn the brightness up, you can find Springtrap hiding in the dark. He's still alive, despite the fire. It was a deliberate hint that Scott gave us. Now, let's go back to the good ending. We've established that Scott hides things in the darkness of his images, even images displayed in the games themselves. So if we turn the brightness up in the image from the good ending, we find... nothing. Mess with the brightness, the contrast, anything. There's nothing hiding in the darkness here. No hidden clues to sequels, no answers to lingering questions, and most importantly, no Golden Freddy. The lights didn't go out in the good ending. The mask itself disappeared. Just the same as how Scott showed a spring trap in the darkness to say that he was still alive, he didn't show us Golden Freddy with the rest of the deactivated animatronics to say that he wasn't gone. Golden Freddy was still active, and still had a role to play in the story. The child that we see move on in Happiest Day is definitely the crying child. He's finally put at peace after being surrounded by his friends at a birthday party, a happy memory to counteract the miserable memory of his death. But just because one of those spirits was able to move on doesn't mean that the other goes along with it, as we can see with Jake and Andrew and the Stitch Rate Stingers. So what it shows us that Golden Freddy's head is missing from the rest of the deactivated animatronics? That doesn't speak to me as the spirit moving on. Instead, it comes off as the opposite. While one spirit, the crying child, was able to drift away peacefully, the vengeful spirit still lingers on. If you ask me, this is a classic case of sequel baiting. In case you weren't around back then, there was a point in time where FNAF 3 was supposed to be the final game in the series, which obviously didn't happen. But in my mind, I figured that Scott probably realized the potential for the series to continue on after, and left a few dangling threads that he could unravel should he ever decide to return to it. I imagine that's also the reason why he showed a Springtrap surviving the fire. And thankfully, both of these things ended up paying off in the end. 
FNAF 6 shows us the return of Afton in the form of Scraptrap, before he finally dies and is subjected to an endless hell by the hands of Golden Freddy's vengeful spirit. It all works out in the end. So, who is the vengeful spirit then? It's pretty hard to say for sure. See, when you ask me about who the vengeful spirit might be, my thought immediately goes here. This tuft of hair we see sticking out of a spring lock suit in FNAF 4. I assume it's a child since we can see adults wearing this all the time and their heads always reliably stick out through the top. It'd be pretty reasonable to assume that this is a Fredbear suit as well. But if this is the vengeful spirit, then a couple of massive questions are immediately raised. Consider the implications this would have in the timeline. Let's say that the vengeful spirit is this child right here. This means that William's first victim died before the crying child. In fact, it would mean that William's killed multiple children by the time of FNAF 4. Think back to Henry's and Wither Chica's lines in FNAF 6 and Ultimate Customite respectively. Chica claims to be the first, and Henry claims that the wound was first inflicted on him via his daughter. That's two potential victims slated to be first in Athens' killing spree. And if either of them were first, then they would have to have died not only before the crying child in 1983, but also before the vengeful spirit we see in the suit. Otherwise, neither of these statements make sense. That said, if this is the vengeful spirit's body, then it actually gives us an answer to something. The missing children incident. Kind of. You see, there's been a really big issue with that for a while. We're directly told that five children went missing in FNAF 1, but we have seven dead kids. Is this a retcon? Well, maybe not. You see, nowhere in those newspapers was Fredbear's Family Diner ever mentioned. It was always specifically Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And of those seven kids, two of them could be connected to Fredbear's, the crying child and the vengeful spirit, if you go with the assumption that that's who this is. This would leave only five kids connected to the MCI. This could theoretically explain the Wither Chica line as her just being the first of the MCI, but it still wouldn't explain Henry's line about Charlie. FNAF 2 shows us Charlie specifically dying outside of Freddy's, so she'd be connected to the MCI here. But the FNAF 1 newspapers talk about luring children to the back rooms, which evidently didn't happen to Charlie. We also know that it didn't happen to the crying child, which would mean that the fifth child to get lured away would have to be the vengeful spirit, but we find that body in a completely different restaurant. You see the issue I'm having here? The whole timeline is at this point. If the kid from FNAF 4 is the vengeful spirit, then either I'm misunderstanding something, or there's a retcon here somewhere. And quite frankly, I don't feel comfortable saying that. I can't just sit here and claim retcons when I either don't understand something or something doesn't fit my narrative. I don't think anyone should have that power. Scott retconned something at some point, but we have no idea where it actually is or if he's made more retcons ever since. I'm not just gonna sit here and assume that he's made more since then unless he makes a comment on it himself. That would make me, or anyone else who does it, a terrible theorist. This is all pretty rambly and unrelated to the original point in this video. Honestly, I don't think I had a point in this video to begin with. I've just heard so much talk about the vengeful spirit recently that I had to get my thoughts out there somehow. I hope that this wasn't too incoherent at least. But with that said, just because I can't pinpoint the identity of the vengeful spirit doesn't mean I can't tell you what happened to them. If you ask me, we've known how this kid died for a while now, and we just never put the pieces together. The community's been getting thrown off by red herrings in these games for a while now, and in the process, we've overlooked something big. Something that, at least to me, makes perfect sense in the context of the game it's presented in, and makes even more sense considering what happened immediately after. And about a year ago, I promised that I would be the one to put all of those pieces together. I promised that I'd be the one to finally close the case on a mystery that's left everyone so stumped that people collectively just began settling for answers that were only good enough. And now that I'm finally getting back into the swing of things, and the identity of the vengeful spirit is back in the spotlight, it's time to make good on my word. I'll see you all soon.